So this is next war, India Pakistan, as you can see there. I'm just setting it up at the moment. I'll just zoom out there so you can see this map. It's a single mapper. It's um, the third in the next war series that started with Korea, Taiwan, India, Pakistan, and then Poland. Um, you can see, even though it's a one mapper, it takes up quite a lot of table space because you've got this um, air war sort of chart thing over here for doing the air missions and a, a track here. And then I've got all the play aids down here in front of the map and all the rules and blah, books as accountants. Um, I'm playing this for a couple of reasons. Um, I know I've not done a vid for a while, but life's been very, very busy. Um, so I'm getting into this for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because um, I wanted to try out the advanced game in the Next War series. And um, this is the smallest, easiest footprint game in the series um, uh, to, to do that with. So um, if I swing around here... Um, the, the, the Korea is a two mapper and um, Taiwan and Poland here both have um, a sort of um, regional mini map separate layer of game going on um, which makes it all more all a bit more complicated let's uh, just see what's going on in here so, so, so pop Taiwan open for a second um, you can see straight away there it's got this it's got this regional, this regional sort of um, uh, map thing going on that you have to deal with on top of the, on top of the main map and so on, and that's all a bit hectic. Um, and Poland's got the same. So um, India, Pakistan, and Korea don't have those, but India, Pakistan is the smaller game, and I figured the easier game, therefore, to get in to the uh, advanced game. Which introduces quite a lot of stuff, um, mainly air war related stuff. Um, so all the all the specific air counters that you get here for either side, and this idea of um, air superiority being a, a thing that you can test and dice roll with counters rather than just uh, some abstract air points. This is all part of the advanced game. You have um, in this game you have nuke points, you have missile points um, for both sides, you have um, special forces counters that you can send on missions. Um, so all this gets added in and also you get these tracks for um, detection, surface to air missiles and anti-air missiles for either side. The, the, their values are identical at the start of the game for both sides. Um, so the Indians are the beige counters and Pakistan are the dark green. Um, another thing you do in the advanced game is you determine um, the, the position of your allies and, and how much support they're going to um, provide. And in this game, we rolled through a set of tables called an international posture matrix. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to find that. Here it is. Um, just down here, the International Posture Matrix, and we you roll for the administration, military and popular vote in each of the three countries that may be um, interested parties, and that's America, the Soviet Union, uh, or Russia, and um, China. Um, uh, in this scenario, um, the Indian player uh, has to choose between America and Russia as their allies if both are interested in participating. Um, and uh, China joins the um, Pakistan side. And what we rolled was a dove position for, uh, sorry, um, yeah, we rolled dove, dove, dove for the Russians and they ended up with a passive um, posture, um, which meant that their um, in the scenario I'm playing, the intervention level for them would have been two, which would have been some resources and maybe some, you know, cruise missile strikes or something. The Americans rolled moderate. They had a Dove administration, moderate military and hawkish popular vote. They ended up um, in a moderate posture, which in an extended build up was intervention level three, which is supplies, cruise missiles. But then they're going to send air 
um, support in, direct air support in, which will mean a lot of scary US Air Force shows up and is pretty much going to determine the air war entirely in the Indians' favour, I would think, once those um, forces show up. And um, the Chinese um, rolled um, hawk, hawk and hawk and ended up aggressive and... Um, that meant that they are fully invested in the conflict and are sending, you know, ground troops as well as supplies, cruise missiles and some air units. Um, the Chinese air force, frankly, isn't particularly impressive um, unless you take optional rules to add in their better stealth units, which I'm not using. Um, uh, so um, that's the state of play. None of those um, forces are arriving yet. There's a big man of double-sided manifest up here that tells you what, what arrives when. Um, and it could be that we hit a reinforcement phase and I have to dig out American and um, Chinese uh, reinforcements. But I'm not doing that right now. I'm still in the setup phase. What I've got to do is a couple of things. Um, before we're even ready to go into turn one. I, so I've set all the, the troops up. Um, what I've got to do now is a couple of pre-game um, tasks. So both sides get to move everything um, once. So they get one move with all their forces to get them into a, a, a the position that they want them in for the start of the game. Then um, the Republic of India is going to get to destroy some bridges if it wants to, although that hands Pakistan victory points. And then the Pakistan player is going to get to conduct um, up to five um, missile strikes against um, eligible targets in India, um, probably sort of air bases and, and um, airfields, air bases, uh, but they can strike other facilities if they like as long as they have detected them. So installations like, you know, nuclear sites like that, they could potentially strike if they wanted to. Um, so uh, they get to do that. Um, and once all that has happened, then both sides will get to put down their combat outposts and we'll be ready um, to start. And these combat outposts are sort of like fortified, patrolled areas that are... Um, you know, they're not empty, they are fortified and patrolled, but but they're, you know, not 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 occupied with sort of full-on military units, if that makes sense. Um, so that's where we are, um, just in the setup phase. Um, the other reason I wanted to play this, and I will talk a little bit about this, is because um, I've just picked up another game. Um, so... If I swing around here, I've just picked up this, um, less than 60 miles, um, by Thin Red Line Games, and um, that, um, it looks a very interesting title. Uh, this is operational set in, I'm not quite sure when it's set, but let's say 1982 or something. This is a Cold War um, game about the full set set around the full gap US Fifth Corps Warsaw Pact invades blah 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 blah. Um, these are both sort of modern operational games. I mean we have to be careful here that because less than sixty miles is set in about nineteen eighty two eighty five something like that, and this is set now. So there's as much time between these two titles as there is between say World War One and World War Two, which is you know quite a lot, but. They are both operational titles, um, and they do things very differently, or, or um, for for good reason. But th this this less than sixty miles has game turns which are three hours long, so it's operational, but tending right down at the most detailed level of operational, where you're giving units, you know, attack and recon and defend and and refit kind of orders, and this game here is one turn is three and a half days um, and um, you know it's very high level and abstracted in many senses um, so it'll be interesting to to sort of see 
the difference between the two two approaches. Um, and I thought playing them sort of side by side next to each other, not not literally in parallel, but one following the other, would be quite interesting in in seeing two very different um, sort of levels of operational game if you like a very top level operational game which this is and a very zoomed in operational game which it looks like less than 60 miles is although i haven't punched it or read the rules i only know that from watching some vids by um kev at the big board who's done some excellent coverage of that game um so there it is that's another reason to to crack this open and then to follow it up with less than 60 miles which is my kind of plan at the moment um the rest of my life permitting. So all the game setup is now done for um, border war in uh, next war India Pakistan, <coughs> and um, the uh, Pakistan ballistic missile strikes were very good indeed. Um, destroyed an airfield down here. That's the marker, which was it, it's that airfield there. <clears throat> Put a strike two on this air base here and destroyed that air base there, which corresponds to that um, plane uh, symbol just here. Uh, that was destroyed as well. And in all that, uh, they wiped out a couple of air mobile points and they also damaged, um, were able to damage both of the Indian Air Force's um, best fighters, these. Um, these uh, Su-30s, all-weather, medium-range, good pilot, five standoff, two-two, great plane, best in the uh, air force, and they've damaged both of those with great results on the collateral damage table, and also a uh, Jaguar as well. So pretty successful strikes on the um, on the um, Indian air assets, and. Um, <coughs> Now they're looking to see how they're going to press an attack here. So um, the um, Indian second, sorry, the Pakistani second corps is down here looking for a way um, into this fairly sparsely defended region down here. But there's a major river uh, in the way. The um, <coughs> Indians tried to blow this bridge here to make life really difficult, but failed, but did manage to blow the bridge down here, further down the river to stop any any ex, um, sort of attempts to get into this area where there's no defence at all. Um, and obviously there's been quite a heavy build up in this area around Amritsar. You've got three um, Pakistani corps here, the fourth corps there, the second corps there, there's another one somewhere, the 30th corps, these orange orange units over here. Um, so that's all looking pretty dangerous as well. The rougher terrain up over in the sort of Kashmir area is just horrible. Not quite sure how things are going to go down over there. <coughs> and I think the um, um, Pakistan command is waiting for some Chinese assistance um, from, from the Chinese holding box over here before considering what to do in that area um, but yeah the forces that they've got over in that region don't seem to be enough to to make any headway against what's defending which is a fairly sizable mountain 279th what core is this 14th but they're all mountain capable troops and you've got the um, 16th core here these blue guys um, pretty decent units um, with some armour rolling up in support and um, a couple more mounting units up here in the 15th Corps. Um, so that's not the main uh, focus of the um, attack at the moment. It is going to be down here in the flatlands where um, Pakistan are hoping to use their something of an armour advantage down here to uh, try and make um, headway if they can get across the rivers. So I've been playing a while now, and um, what's noticeable straight away is I haven't moved anything on the board. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying that's a bad thing, um, but uh, we've gone through 
quite a lot of steps which haven't involved moving anything on uh, combat units or anything on the board. So we've done um, these phases, weather, initiative, this electronic detection phase which allowed um, roles for detection of various units and um, you can see some HQs got detected. Um, we've got a detection marker and over on the um, uh, over on the Indian side we've got an HQ down here that got detected. You can see a strike marker because it got hit by a missile, a ballistic missile strike having been detected. You can see uh, a detected marker over there on that HQ but it avoided any any missile attacks. You can see other strike markers on the board because we've done um, this first, oh that was um, a special forces phase where we used these um, special forces mission counters um, to um, uh, launch um, you know covert ops against uh, HQs and air bases and helicopters and, um, and anti-aircraft defences. So the counters on this track have moved down. The, uh, the Pakistanis did a good job of um, dropping the uh, Indian def um, detection capabilities right down, but in turn had their own detection and SAM capabilities dropped. You can see these um, AH-64s in the uh, Indian um, Army got a stat reduction. That was again due to a, a successful sp special operations um, mission. And then we roll for whether they survive or whether they get eliminated. And you can see two in each of the eliminated boxes. But the uh, Pakistani forces still have more special forces available. We've obviously done the um, air naval steps. So um, there was a big uh, fight up here. Um, which, because of the um, collateral damage done to um, these, uh, the best of the... Um, Indian Air Force. They didn't get sent up in the combat because they didn't want to risk them. They want to try and repair, recover them using supply or whatever, whatever the rules allow. Um, so there was air combat and the uh, Pakistani Air Force came out just on top. You can see they got they had six units left in the air superiority box to four, which gave them exactly 1.5 to 1 and gave them air advantage. They're not going to be able to do anything with that because they've got nothing to fly. Uh, they can fly intercept missions but there's not going to be anything to intercept so it's going to be a standoff there but it did allow them to drop the um, AWACS. This is used to determine who gets to pick first in air combat and how many they get to pick. And so, it, so this gives you the this gives you a massive advantage. If you've got AWACS superiority, it gives you a massive advantage to set the, to pick the fights here that work best to your advantage. And they've managed to reset that so that it, we're in sort of a neutral posture rather than, rather than Indian superiority. So um, this is all just delaying the inevitable. The Americans are going to sweep in with their air forces, and and it's going to be massively in favour of the um, um, Indian. Indian forces in terms of air, this just buys them um, the Pakistani uh, side a little bit of breathing space on that front. Um, so we've done that. Um, we've done another set round of set, set, um, special forces missions. Then we've done some uh, missile strikes, traded missile strikes. We would also have done air strikes and cruise missile strikes had we had any of those things. Um, now we're into a, f a supply phase. And I've got to work out what's happening here. So I've done all of that, um, not moved a single piece on the board as yet, um, but it just shows the sort of balance of of, of where the um, you know where where some of the focus is uh, according to this game. In that uh, a lot of it is happening in special forces in your air air operations in your cruise missile and ballistic missile strikes, in your intel gathering and detection of enemy movement and so on. Um, and that, you know, the the uh, the actual ground war is played, uh, you know, get out against that framework. So it's really sort of interesting to see um, how this is unfolding um, and what impact all this um, framework sort of development is going to have when the forces start moving. 
so a couple of things now happening here um, units moving in next to India Pakistan um, here south of well we're we're north of Lahore actually because the north is this direction so uh, there's, there's this Lahore he's in here Lahore okay um, wherever this is then would be north northeast of Lahore you can see a great stacker here of the first core everything stacked in there this would normally massively breach stacking limits but you're allowed to stack entire um, units from as long as they're from the same um, formation you can stack everything together so there's this massive stack that's come down here with this really potent 15 10 5 6 efficiency armor unit in it that wants to get into open ground and run amok with its factors doubled against infantry that's going to be great and another armor unit there but massively over the stacking limits however you're allowed to do that if they're all from the same formation certainly that's my understanding um and there they all are um and the plan is to use this hq uh to use the fact that we've got an initiative turn and therefore are going to get essentially the sort of double move when you've got the initiative you get to move and move again and the only thing that gets to sort of try to come and try and stop you is elite enemy units with six or more um, efficiency ratings so we're going to try and uh, throw a bridge down across here somewhere and and um, and then flood across into you know into this area so that's the current plan and if that doesn't work then we'll boot this way and try and flood down crack through here so there's another option if we can't get the bridging done across this major river um, which is to fly down this direction and support um, um, this core this orange core 30th core in an attack into this area um, we're just on the first combat of the game then, so um, to try and help with this we wanted to knock out this mech unit because it's got a six, um, uh, 6 efficiency rating which would allow it to move in the elite move phase. Um, so we attacked him with this armour, this infantry, this infantry we threw in support from our HQ over here and from this artillery battery that had moved down and five factors, six factors, seven factors, plus three from this, 21 factors into four defense. It was a five to one attack. Um, all kinds of things contributed, so it was on this five to one table. It was bumped down because of the fortifications, back up because of the surprise, back up because of the artillery. So we ended up on the five to one table. Um, right out over here on the right hand side of the chart because it's in flat woods rolled a four with minus two drms for various things one because of having the odds in the initial drm calculation and another one from attacking from three hexes and we ended up five to one rolling a four and that is uh, rolling a four with a minus two that ends up um no attacker losses two step losses for the defender and a retreat and uh, two step losses for the defender is a dead unit so that mechanized got, just got taken out in the first combat of the game and um aside from anything else i think that's victory points um for the pakistan forces and i must remember to keep track of those because they're important for determining initiative in future turns So at the end of all the movement and combat that's going to happen in turn one, you can see here that Pakistan has made a significant sort of breakthrough across the river um, north of Lahore. Here. Here's Lahore, here's a river running down and they've crossed the river here and broken out into this area. And they've now got this town, which I'll pronounce very badly, or city Amritsar, kind of under control from all directions without having actually taken it it's defended very solidly um, I've pushed out down into this area um, to contest uh, you know start putting pressure on a nuclear facility there and this city of um, currently the name again pa Pathankot 
sorry for the pronunciation. Um, and are pressuring up here as well into these two urban areas uh, that need holding. Um, they are well held, but um, and equally have uh, smashed their way across the river here. Haven't really taken anything of value, um, but they are threatening all over the map. Except up here in Kashmir, where it's uh, just in this mountainous region. I, I think this is the Kashmir region. I'm fairly sure it is. Um, I'd have to. I'd have to be absolutely sure of that. I shouldn't just keep repeating it as if it definitely is. Anyway, um, this region... Oh, no, it says there, the Kashmir Valley. Uh, okay, good. I'm glad I was getting that right. So, um, yeah, the, um, the, 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 the four Pakistani forces are making ground slowly, but this mountainous terrain makes supply very difficult, makes movement very difficult, makes everything very difficult. And there are sufficient... Indian forces in the region, specialist mountain troops and other troops to make it um, to make it hard to see a way in that's going to be successful. So um, they're biding their time here a little bit, just inching forward. Um, losses, the Indian um, army and air force have, uh, as you can see, um, suffered some significant losses there. Two infantry divisions at headquarters a mechanised infantry brigade, an armoured brigade, and some MiG-27s. And together with the loss of the odd town and the odd airfield, um, that has added up to 22 victory points um, for uh, Pakistan this turn. Uh, and the difference in victory points this turn is also 22, because India haven't got any. Um, what that means is that, um, I think, I'll, um, but... Um, you need 20 victory points more than your opponent in a turn to get the initiative. I'm fairly sure that when I run through and do the sums and check it, um, that Pakistan is going to have another initiative turn next turn, which allows them to roll on with more action and activity than their opponents. So that's really good news for them. Um, and I've had to uh, do some thinking about how to, for example, try and defend in this area. And um, the Indian forces pretty much pulled out of this city and had to drop back and defend down here because there's another very valuable nuclear site there. And there's, uh, you know, a city down here. And all this was completely open and undefended and they pretty much had to bail out of this area. They've left an infantry unit in the city there, which is doubled because it's urban. So that's 14 factors defending um, Abul Ha there. Um, uh, but otherwise they've had to pull back down here. What they do think they can do is in the replacements phase is probably reconstitute this armour unit for a couple of replacement points and it will be legal to replace him where he was lost actually um, or around where he was lost. No, he was lost defending this bridge actually but it will be legal to reconstitute him back in that city and offer some defences back there. So they do have little um, little mechanisms to make life tough um, not a cakewalk for the <clears throat> this Pakistan invasion, but Pakistan has managed the first turn uh, and to retain uh, the initiative with its gains, um, which is going to make turn two um, really interesting again. Enjoying this game so far. Um, yeah, I haven't really consolidated any thoughts on it though, so um, I haven't got a spiel as to what to say yet um, about the advanced game, but um, it's proving... Yeah, really thought-provoking, interesting. Not a, I haven't played fast. I've taken, you know, set up and play of that first turn. It took me a day, not a solid play, but pottering around, doing other things, coming back to it, and then going away and doing other things, coming back to it. It's taken me a day to play through um, just the first turn. I'm hoping to speed up a bit um, as I get uh, more familiar with the system.